Oh man, here we go again. It's the start of a new episode, and we're coming over a new video. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be going over how to improve your aim for people who are new to Valent or who are just looking to improve their aim in general. Time frames are in the description, and it's pretty lengthy to practice and aim train. So you'll probably want to adjust your own schedule depending on how much time you have to the amount of time the aim training requires. What is this thing? Is it M? Okay, whatever. Anyways, enough side tracking. Before you learn to shoot anyone, you're gonna want to find the right sensitivity. And to do that, you're gonna have to ask yourself, am I a wrist aimer or an arm aimer? And they're both pretty self-explanatory and basically mean if you use your wrist only or your arm when you aim. For wrist aimers, you generally want- oh my god, that's so loud, alright. Anyways, so generally for wrist aimers, you want to be able to do a 180 turn with a with the, a single rotate of your wrist, I suppose, like this. This or until you can't move your wrist anymore. For me, I can do slightly over 180, so you want to be able to do like 120 degrees to 180. Uh, for pro players that are using wrist aim, they generally just use low sense, but they uh, swipe their wrists a lot. But I don't like that, so anyways. And for arm aimers, you aim with your arm and your wrist, so that means you have a wider range of motion, and you are going to want a higher sensitivity. I mean, not higher sensitivity, what am I say? You will want a lower sensitivity. Alright, so now that you know the general area of where you want your sensitivity, you're going to go to the range, and you're going to turn off practice if you have it on, and you're going to shoot one spot, if I can get... There you go. Alright, you're gonna shoot one spot and you're gonna shoot another spot. You're gonna get switch back and forth and you're gonna and you're going to want to notice if you overshoot or undershoot when you swap between the targets. You want the right sensitivity where you'll be able to comfortably control your aim and consistently be hitting the same two targets with overshooting or undershooting. So say I am overshooting, right, and I'm doing this on my way back, or I'm shooting too far and I can't control my aim too well. I'm going to want to lower my sensitivity so that it doesn't go as far. Or say when I or say I'm undershooting and say I want to go back to the middle and I am doing this and I am not making it back to the middle, I am going to want to increase my sensitivity so I can actually hit the middle. And once you get this down and you can consistently hit the same two spots over and over and while you're doing this also, you're going to want to increase the distance every so little, every couple shots after you shoot and um, after that you will get comfortable alright so that's it for finding your right sensitivity and now it's time to go a little bit more in depth with aiming mouse control and aim trainers this applies to everyone but especially for people who are newer to PC you wanna have good mouse control so that you can move your mouse to where you want without issues to improve your mouse control you can get an aim trainer and a free aim trainer I'd suggest using is called aim labs and to get aim labs you simply just go to the steam store you type in aim labs and you click on all right don't don't type it in the s but you just type in aim lab and then you just click on it and you can install and once you get into aim labs it should greet you with an account sign in thing go through the details or whatever and you're all set to go so the first thing you want to do is go to training, go into your settings, and then after that you go to your controls, put in your game of choice, your sensitivity, and you're all good to go. Alright, so now that you've done all the gritty nitty technical parts of aim labs, you probably want to start shooting stuff now or getting better mouse control. And to do that, I'd suggest starting off with Gridshot Ultimate. This is a perfect for learning and improving your mouse control. Gridshot Ultimate utilizes three targets. And this is pretty useful because the targets are pretty spread out and they're pretty big. So when you first start out, you can take your time slowly hitting the targets one by one, making sure you hit them. And over time, you can get faster and faster as you get more comfortable. Alright, so once you have a good grip on how you want to move your mouse in all directions, you probably want to improve your precision. And I have a few good suggestions for that. Alright, so first you want to click the playlist, which is in the training area at the bottom left, and then you want to click create playlist. And from here, you can see all the different scenarios and the categories they're in. So first you want to start off with warming up your brain. So a simple detection 
or motion shot speed will do. Many of the speed categorized scenarios have very large targets so they're really good for warming up your muscles. You can have other scenarios to warm up to but after that you're going to want to work on your precision. And for that I'd suggest grid shot precision, headshot, and where is it if I can find it? Where is six shot? It's in uh, it's in flicking isn't it? And then you want to go flicking you want to hit six shot here. And what this does is it gives you really tiny targets to hit. And you're going to be pretty slow at first, but you're going to have to work on it, and it'll work, and you'll get better over time. Alright, you'll notice that Aimlabs has a lot of verticality involved. Well, if you have good crosshair placement in Valor, it's mainly horizontal aim. So you might wonder, what's the point in Aimlabs besides just having mouse control? Well, Aimlabs also trains flicking, but in Valor, you're mainly doing something called micro flicks. And micro flicks are something that are just, well, they're micro flicks, they're tiny flicks and grid shot precision and six shot trains your micro flick muscles. Another scenario I forgot to mention earlier that trains your micro flicking is far superior than six shot and grid shot precision is something called most spider shot? Is this spider shot? Oh, another scenario that I forgot to mention earlier that trains your micro flicks way better than grid shot or six shot it's something called precision micro shot and what this does it gives you a big ball at first and then it can gradually micro get smaller shot. and smaller as you shoot it and not only that but the shots are actually close to each other imitating a somewhat realistic environment from Valorant alright so once you're done with improving your mouse control and flicks on aim labs you'll probably want to improve your in-game aim and the perfect place for that is deathmatch in the range Deathmatch uses the in-game maps and because of this allows you to learn where to aim as you're going around the map. The range however allows you to test your sensitivity and also allows you to practice your spray control near the adjustable target. Alright so as soon as you enter the range what you want to do is you want to turn around and go to your left. And from here you can see that the targets are adjustable to this distance as you shoot them. But what you want to do here is you want to practice the spray control of the Phantom and the Vandal. And you're probably going to want to start off your gun of choice. Mine personally is the Phantom. And what you're going to do is you're going to send a bunch of bullets to the side of the target. And you want to notice which way the bullet goes and try to aim the other way. For example, the bullets go up and to the right. And then so I want to pull down and to the left as I'm shooting. After dumping a clip into the side of the target, you'll want to actually focus your spray into the center circle of the target. Now I'm going to shoot my bullets into the target. Preferably I like to right aim here. at the top here because the center is a bit unpredictable. So if I right imagine here. that's a head at the very peak of the circle, I'm just going to pull down and go right after. And I want most of the bullets to be contained within the area here that I'm shooting at where the head would be. So after that, once I've done that and I feel comfortable with how I'm doing things and that if it looks good to me, I'm going to increase the distance a little and I'm going to rinse and repeat, increasing distance each time. So at 20 meters, I'll shoot the target, the side of it, shoot a couple bullets and then I'll aim at the center. My form's a bit off right now, okay. But um, I'll aim into the side, now I'll aim at the center, I'll pull down. I didn't pull down enough, but anyways, I'll pull down. Imagine that good. So I'll do the same for 30. I notice that the first three bullets, or first three bullets, there's three bullets there, but first three bullets I pull down gently. It pops up quickly for the next couple bullets. So here I'll aim at the center and then I'll pull down. I want to maintain most of my spray in the center. A good way to start off is shooting two, three bullets at a time and increase it to five, maybe even ten you're feeling confident. So once you're done spray control, what you want to do is you want to go into the actual range, hit the practice button, and you start headshotting the bots. What this does is going to improve your precision. Look at the head level here. Because notice how all the bots are on a straight line, their head. So in this game, if you didn't know, getting a headshot kills the target pretty quickly. And almost instantly. Depending on your gun. So what you want to do is you want to move the heads and maybe move side to side if you want. You can try to trade or whatever. And just talk to the game. So you want to mechanics and get more comfortable. If you want to look at the movement, I suppose, and say you can try to trade for the gun. You can think of it. Alright, 
So once you're done with whatever you want to do, this thing, you can go to the bots and you can start off with easy, medium, and hard. You're gonna probably want bot armor on and just I'm gonna do hard I suppose. I'm not that good at that good at this, but wish me luck. And this one just practice your Alright, so once you're done with the range, you can go into a death map. Alright, so if you're just running around, you'll want to trace walls as you go about, so that you're ready for a fight. And if you're ready for a fight and swing the beacon angle, such as cat from tiles in the set, you'll want the pre-aim cat so that you're ready for the fight. Here's an example, so if I'm just coming from, say, spawn, I spawn here, I want to be tracing the side of the wall because I don't know if anyone's here, and I can cook right who, here. Who actually plays right here? So I just want to be looking at the wall as I go, clearing out the angles, go back to this wall here, and just slowly do this, you know? And now, people could be playing here, right here. or here, right there. I want to pre-aim, I know there's a guy screaming, so I'm looking at the wall, but I'm also right here. looking at the screens. So as I sway, see, if I shot right there, so I would die. That's basically pre-aiming, it's just look at where you want, and like, through the wall. See, I'm looking through the wall, but right I want to shoot. Who am I kidding? My knees are gonna kill after this. As Fight. you do more and more deathmatch, you will know what form of aiming to do, and you'll get more efficient at it. I'll do a two minutes of footage for example. Alright, so I went over how to improve your aim, but how do you want to go about this in your everyday schedule? Well, for me, I just use aim labs to warm up, quick 10 minutes, warm up my brain and arms so that I can react and flick to things, you know? And after that, I'll hop into the Valorant range, which is just in practice. I'll do the spray control thing for a little bit. Well, not a little bit, but I'll just do it once for each distance with the Vandal and the Phantom. I'll do the practice where I can flick to the targets quickly. And after that, I'll hit a couple death matches, depending on how much I want to do. And for the death matches, I generally go for 10. All right, so to sum this up into a little schedule, I just do aim labs, go into the range, and I spend most of my time in deathmatch practicing the aim I'll need during my games. But if your time doesn't really consume for this, you could skip aim labs because it's mainly just for the warm up of the arm control, your muscles, and your brain. But immediately, you can just hit the range, do the spray stuff, and just hit a deathmatch immediately. Alright, that'll be it for the video, and I'll see you guys later. I still need to do the start. You know, I'll do the start.